The sentence of the court is that you be taken from this place to the place whence you came, and that you be then taken to such place as His Excellency the Governor shall direct, and that you be hanged by the neck until you are dead, and that your body be buried in the precincts of the jail in which you have been last confined. May God have mercy on your soul. I will see you there where I go. Who was Ned Kelly? Australian hero or murderer? Terrorist or revolutionary? Freedom fighter or bush ranger? He loomed larger than Robin Hood for me. He was someone that was was uh, was an Australian and an Irishman who uh, stood against the, the forces of uh, of oppression. My family don't see it that way. They see him as uh, someone who murdered three policemen, who had been a horse stealer before. They had a criminal record before that. There's been so much effort being put in by a lot of people to try and turn Ned Kelly into a hero. Now, really, I don't think he was. The more you know about Ned Kelly, the more monolithic he becomes, which means to his admirers, he's all the more to be admired. To his detractors, he's all the more to represent the uh, champion of the underdog who will take on anything and doesn't know when he's beaten. Ned Kelly's parents came to Australia from Ireland. His father came as a convict. His mother, at the age of 12, with her parents. This, of course, is, is a very um, small family tree. It's just the basic people. James Quinn and Mary McCluskey brought eight of their children over from Antrim. They left Bellamina and Antrim, Ireland in 1840, and they arrived in Melbourne in 1841. I had seven darling children, and one by one, the lot of them sailed out across that great big sea to that land so far away. <laughs> 